Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our meeting, our gathering together for worship this morning, whether you're here or whether you're watching on video. Psalm 145 in the last verse says this, My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Let's join in with that as we stand, if you're able, and sing all creatures of our God and King. Lift up your voice and with us sing, Hallelujah. So let's stand.
And so, please join me as we come to pray, and I'm going to read some of the first verses first of Psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name for ever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendour of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. Every day I will praise you. Father God, thank you that you have ordained this day as a special day. Lord, we do praise you every day. But Lord, you have given us this day that we can set aside this first day of the week. Lord, this is the day that the Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead, triumphant over death and over sin because of his sacrifice for us on the cross. Father God, we thank you that this is the day that the Holy Spirit came in power at Pentecost, the day the church burst forth and many were added to it. The promise that the Holy Spirit was for all people. And Father, we give you our thanks today that he is here with us, ministering among us and dwelling within us. Father, our prayer this day is that as he works, we will be open to his leading. And Father, we ask you that you will forgive us for those times when we do not treat this day as we ought. Lord, this day was given for us that we might worship you and be prepared for whatever should lie ahead. And Father, it gives us a day which is different, a day in which we can do different things and set aside. And Lord, one of those things we want to do is to meditate on your wonderful works. Indeed, Lord, your works are wonderful. Father, as we look at the creation, again we see the changing of the season. And Lord, this reminds us of your faithfulness, your goodness to us. Father, we pray for those in our country. We pray for our country, Lord, and for those in authority over us. And Lord, particularly we pray for King Charles and his family, and for Liz Truss and her government at this very difficult time for so many, facing a crisis in the cost of living. Lord, we do ask that they will govern for the benefit of all. Grant to them wisdom and understanding. Lord, would you turn their hearts towards you? We pray for those in government, both national and local, who seek to honour you. Possibly sometimes, Lord, having to stand against the tide of secularism that we see. Give them the assurance of your will and of your ways. And Lord, we pray for those this morning that we know have a specific need in our prayers. So let's have a time of quiet as we can bring them to you. Father, we thank you that we can bring our prayers to you, being assured of your answer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. 
for ever and ever. Amen. We're going to sing two more worship songs. First of all, we're going to sing The Lord's My Shepherd, and that's the Stuart Town End version, I Will Trust in You Alone. And then we're going to be able to follow that up. We can trust in him alone because his mercy is more than all of our sins. And so we're going to sing The Lord's My Shepherd and then His Mercy Is More. So please stand if you're able. Oh 
our sins they are many, his mercy is more. We're going to pray, the young ones will go out and then we'll give thanks for the offering and then we'll have our Bible reading. Father, we thank you that though our sins are many, Lord, we think about the Apostle Paul who called himself the chief of sinners. But Lord, as we look at ourselves, we realise the depth of our sin. But Lord, the amount, the wonder of your mercy. Lord, our sins have been thrown into a sea without bottom or shore. Because though our sins are many, your mercy is more. Lord, we pray for the young people that we have in our church, not those only today, but those who join us through the week, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for our Thursday night meetings, and thank you, Lord, that we have an opportunity to share with the, there with them the word of God. We pray, Lord, that you will bless the work amongst our young people. And Lord, for those who uh, have that responsibility of leading that work and taking part in that work, Lord, keep us encouraged. Give us the strength that we need to do that. Lord, we thank you too for the opportunity to give to the offering today. And we thank you, Lord, that uh, as we give, Lord, you take these gifts and you will use them that your kingdom might grow in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, our Bible reading this morning, uh, we're going to go back to where we left it three weeks ago now. Didn't realise it was going to be so long. And uh, it is from, here we are, from Acts chapter 13 and verses 44 through to 52. Acts chapter 13, verses 34, 44, sorry, to 52. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy. They began to contradict what Paul was saying and heaped abuse on him. Then Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly, We had to speak the word of God to you first. Since you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and honoured the word of the Lord. And all who were appointed for eternal life believed. The word of the Lord spread through the whole region. But the Jewish leaders incited the God-fearing women of high standing and the leading men of the city. They stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their region. So they shook the dust off their feet as a warning to them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. God will indeed, I believe, bless that to us in a few minutes' time. We're going to sing before we look at the word, be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. So if you'd like to stand, if you're able, and we'll sing this lovely song.
Let's commit this time to the Lord. Lord, we pray that your power will move in this place, Lord. We do believe that there is no work too hard for you. Lord, minister among us, we pray. Meet needs this morning, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, they say, don't they, that news travels fast. And I think it's reasonable to say that it's far faster than it ever has been with mobile phones and internet and that kind of thing. You know, within seconds, you can have a message across the world, can't you? News travels fast. Last week, we had a, a wedding here. And uh, I remember going to one wedding not long ago and we walked outside the church and people had got it on Facebook photos of the bride and groom. Just as we had, were coming out of the church. We go back and think about the old ways. Semaphore. How long that used to take. You know, it, and, and to have a think about how fast news travels, think about the Queen when she heard about her father dying, how long it would have taken to get there and to get around the world. Now it was across the world within seconds. Remember the days when you used to write a letter and wait for a reply? Now you just send a text or a uh, one of the other kind of social media things. And, uh, you know, you're tapping your fingers if there's not a reply within a minute. Uh, I think you can, you can tell how old the person you have sent the text to by how quick you get a reply. Because if, uh, I think it must be an age thing, if it's an older person, with respect, a short text takes a few minutes if it's a young person, I'm always amazed I can send a text and within 10 seconds I've got about 10 lines of writing back. <laughs> when we need to know something, we've got the internet, we've got Facebook, through, me, through other social media. News travels fast. What travels faster? Bad news or good news? We know bad news trends to travel faster than good news because many members of society are intrigued by negative news. Many are interested in hearing about tragedies and hardships and sadly failures of others. Bad news can be captivating in a culture that views drama and danger and misfortune as some kind of entertainment on screen. And there was a, a study on Twitter, and they discovered this, that false news travels faster than truth. That's sad, isn't it? False news travels faster than truth. Well, we're going to go back. I thought it would be two weeks, but... Uh, with the passing of the Queen, we're going back three weeks now. And we're still looking at this subject of journeying with Paul. And they are in Antioch. And if you remember back to then, Paul preached his first recorded sermon. And we start, he started where they were and we saw God's preparation. And then he introduced Jesus to them and how Jesus fitted into the Old Testament events. And we saw that that was God's plan, the one that they were waiting for. And then we saw also what Jesus had brought, God's provision. And Paul and Barnabas were then invited to speak again the following Sabbath. Now that was three weeks ago we looked at it, but that was just one week ago for them. And during that week, some of them could not wait and they talked with Paul and Barnabas. But in those seven days, just one week later, news has spread across the city. News spreads fast today, and maybe we've got information overload. There is so much to take in. There is lots of stuff, and lots of stuff that we don't remember. But go back to Antioch. The only news that you hear then is what is spoken. 
So when you hear about what Paul is teaching in the synagogue and that he is preaching again next week, lots will want to be there. In fact, our first verse was quite amazing that we read. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. And the first point this morning is anticipation of the word of the Lord. Almost the whole city has gathered. News has travelled. People have been talking. Just imagine that. Almost the whole city. Now it's been suggested that there has been some harmless exaggeration there. And let me just explain that. It's a phrase that we might use. You know, when we have... Um, I'm sorry to remind you about this, but we're not far off the Christmas lights switch on, okay, in the town. And people say, I reckon the whole town was there. Well, they probably weren't, but what it shows is a very, very large crowd who have gathered. It might have been almost the whole town. A huge crowd have gathered And again, there are Jews and there are God-fearing Gentiles, those who are not Jews by birth, but are following the the Jewish faith. I wonder if you can remember these days. Remember those days? Billy Graham, preaching to thousands upon thousands. Uh, As I was looking for a photo to use, I I found one that says overflow area for people without tickets. Imagine that. Imagine. And and people were crowding, weren't they? Especially in London on the undergrounds. And everywhere was packed with people going to see and listen to Billy Graham. And there was great anticipation. We were privileged to go to Villa Park and Bramall Lane in Sheffield uh, to see Billy, Billy Graham. That was just 35 or 40 years ago, and that was great anticipation. And I had to ask myself, would there be that now? Would there be that now? Would they need overflows? I don't know. But what about in our churches? What about here this morning? Do we have great anticipation? Do we have a feeling of excitement about what is going to happen? You know, last week we came, didn't we? And we had the wedding. And there was amazing anticipation and excitement as people were arriving. But we should be equally excited about being here this week about anticipating what God's got to say to us. What does God want me to say today? I, I, I'm a, I, I do use Facebook, and sometimes one person from another church says, why don't you come to our church today and come and hear what Father God has to say to us? He always puts the same thing. Come and hear what Father God has to say to us. Isn't that what we ought to be thinking. What is God's will for my life? Not just when we're in church, but every time we open our Bible. It's the, the, the scripture's described as fire, as a hammer, as, as a sword. It's powerful. It breaks the hard things in our lives. It penetrates us. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart but it carries the greatest message. I mean, no no apology, because I said this last week. You know, I said last week that you get married by using 33 words, and that's a commitment of your life. But 26 words tells us the message of the scripture, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. They've got anticipation of the word of the Lord. The whole city gathered together to find out what was being said. But the second thing we find is that there was antagonism to the word of the Lord. There was antagonism to the word of the Lord. And when we looked at the beginning of Paul's journeys, we looked at expect opposition. 
there was active hostility. Verse 45, when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy. They began to contradict what Paul was saying and heaped abuse on him. Isn't it antagonism to Paul and Barnabas? Yes, they were filled with jealousy, but I would argue it's antagonism to the words, the word. When they saw the crowds, they could be jealous that Paul had got a bigger congregation than they ever had. And they began to contradict what Paul was saying. It was a personal attack on him, yes, but it was what he was saying. Because the context is that he was saying that forgiveness is found in Jesus Christ. See, many commentators believe that the abuse was hurled towards Jesus. They were speaking disrespectfully of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that should never happen. It should never happen to speak disrespectfully of him. There's a song, I don't think we've sung it here, and it starts off like this. I love the name of Jesus, King of my heart. It is everything to me. Of course, that's, that's about all that he is. But it should hurt us when his name is used in any other way than with a sense of awe and wonder. With a sense of awe and wonder. Paul tells them they had to tell the Jews first. They got to tell the Jews first. Verse 46, we had to speak the word of God to you first. Since you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. They have had, they have had every, every opportunity. Every opportunity. Paul has laid down before them eternal life. He said, but you've rejected it. You've made yourselves unworthy. So now we turn to the Gentiles. Unthinkable to the Jews. Unthinkable that it, this is a message to the Gentiles now. But Paul shows them in their own scriptures, this was always going to happen. This is God's plan. Verse 47, this is what the Lord commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. And he quotes there from Isaiah chapter 49 about God's servant Israel. And this is one of those prophecies which has many fulfillments, okay? Many fulfillments. So when God spoke it, it was about Israel. Israel will always to be a light to the Gentiles. But the greatest way this was going to happen was through the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who brought salvation. In Luke chapter 2, we find there where Jesus is brought before Simeon. And Simeon says this, My eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. So the fulfilment first was that Israel was to be the light to the Gentiles. And then the, the Lord Jesus Christ brings it in a new dynamic way. And then we see that Paul sees it as referring to and being fulfilled in him, bringing light to the Gentiles. In fact, all followers of Christ, including us, are to be a light to the Gentiles. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. And that you there is singular. So it's singular as in the nation, as in the church. That's our role to bring light. But how did the Jews react to this? How did the Jews react to this? Well, in verses 50 and 51, it says, the Jewish leaders incited the God-fearing women of high standing and the leading men of the city. They stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their region. So they shook the dust of their feet as a warning to them and went to Iconium. That's what they did in those days. They shook the dust off their feet. They said, we're not, we don't want to take any more away with us. We're having nothing more to do with this. 
antagonism to the word of the Lord. The message said some of the Jews convinced the most respected women and leading men of the town that their precious way of life was about to be destroyed. You see, everything that they had ever known was being fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't ever think that Jesus was throwing out everything. He's fulfilling everything that is there in the Old Testament. But they persecuted and they got rid of the messengers. They got rid of the messengers. Now is there something there for us? For us, there always is. Some simply will not listen to us. They won't. And some will even be antagonistic to us. And that message version says why? The precious way of life will be disturbed. Values might change, might have to change. Long-held beliefs and practices might go. But it certainly won't be for the worse. It won't be for the worse. But sometimes we may need to move on. Sometimes we may need to move on somewhere else to sow somewhere else but it's biblical isn't it shake the dust off your feet anything get rid of anything that might contaminate you that doesn't mean don't tell them but not everybody's going to listen some will be antagonistic to our message but the third thing is and this is the good news if you like that there was appreciation for the word of the Lord. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and honoured the word of the Lord, and all who were appointed for eternal life believed. Now, I don't want to get sidelined by that second part of that verse. Time is too short this morning. Many books have been written from different angles. But what we must consider this morning is that the way the Gentiles accepted the word, compared to the the, the Jews rejected it and drove Paul and Barnabas out of town, they were glad and they honoured the word of the Lord. This morning, I can tell you the message of salvation. This is what we looked at. Let me use the words that Paul had used seven days earlier. Therefore, my friends, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone who believes is set free from every sin and is justified before God. And these people were truly appreciative of the word. They were truly appreciative of what God had done. Is that how we respond to hearing the word of the Lord? Are we truly appreciative of what God has done? They heard the word. They gathered together almost the whole city. They were in anticipation of the word. Some couldn't wait a week and they talked during the week. They honoured the word they acted upon it is that what i want as i meet in church week by week is that what you want as you watch maybe on youtube that's great but it must not be confused with entertainment which is what we often turn our screens on for i read of a couple in stourbridge And uh, their neighbours in their will left to them some toys and some memorabilia. And they took them and they put them in their garage and left them untouched for many years. And then they decided to have a clear out of the garage and they found them. And they thought they ought to just speak to somebody who perhaps knew about these toys. Somebody said they might be precious toys actually, before throwing them out. And uh, I've got a picture of them. There they are. They were Star Wars things. And it turned out they were worth £250,000. The fortune was there all the time in their garage. And they never 
realised. They never realised it was theirs. It was in the garage. It was gathering dust. John Newton wrote, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. You know, we can do the same sometimes as that couple did. We don't realise all that is ours in Jesus. We might not appreciate that amazing grace. Appreciate all that God has done for you in the Lord Jesus Christ, who loved you and gave himself for you. The light to the Gentiles, bringing salvation to the world. And let's continue to be that fulfilment of those words as we are light to all, wherever God should take us this week. And may we truly appreciate his word and all that he has done for us. Let's pray. Father, we realise this morning before us are words from the scriptures and we see different reactions from people to your word. Some, Lord, were antagonistic to it. Some, Lord, did not want it to be heard by the Gentiles, wanted to keep it to the Jews. But, Lord, there were those who were appreciative of it and honoured your word. and Lives were changed. And, Father, this morning we want to appreciate your word and all that you have done for us lord the great treasure that is ours we don't want it to be hidden away lord forgotten about but lord we want it to be precious to us we want to understand and realize what you have done for us lord and so give us an appreciation Give us, Lord, anticipation every time we come to your word, every time we open your word, that we might anticipate that you will speak to us. And when you do, Lord, help us to be fully appreciative. Amazing grace that saved a wretch like me. Father, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, there's only one song we can sing to finish this morning. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. We're going to sing the, ver the, the version that has the chorus. My chains are gone, now we are free. So let's stand and sing Amazing Grace.
Please take your seats. Let's close as we pray. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Saviour be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen.